Hey everyone, Chris, the Dark Toy Lord here. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Marvel Infinite Series Death's Head action figure by Hasbro. Now the toy has been out for a while and I, I no longer have the original packaging. So I'll throw a quick little picture up just to show you what it looked like. The reason why I'm doing this review of the figure now, after all this time, is because I will be reviewing his newer incarnation, Death's Head 2, uh, very shortly. So I figure before we jump over Death's Head 2, let's go back to the original real quick and uh, give this guy the kudos that he deserves. Here we have Death's Head 1 in the foreground, or actually it would just be called Death's Head, uh, and Death's Head 2 in the background. Uh, so. Death's Head 2 is definitely a much larger action figure. It would have been cool to get them a little bit larger, but I'm really excited to have any version of him that I can get my hand on. So Death Head, he is kind of an obscure Marvel Comics character. A lot of people might not know about him. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the details because this would make this video a lot longer than it needs to be. But essentially, uh, brief history, um, Simon Furman and... Jeff Sr., I think. Uh, they were writing uh, for Marvel Comics UK. Uh, they wanted to have uh, this character in the Transformers comic book. However, there was kind of like this catch-all copyright from Hasbro. Uh, so if they introduced him in the, Marvel's co in the Transformers comic book, then instantly Hasbro would own the character. So they did a, a real quick one-page uh, spread on him called High, High Noon Text, I believe it was. Just to establish him as a Marvel character before he was introduced into the Transformers comic book. Essentially, what he is, he is um, he's a robot. He's a robot bounty hunter. Uh, and it, if, my, if my memory serves me correctly, it's been a long time since I read the comics. But he was almost a bit of a, like a comedic type uh, character. Almost, I say almost maybe Deadpool esque. I'm not sure. It's been a while, so I could be way off, but that's kind of what I remember. Accessories included with Death's Head include his axe. He has this mace. And he has this shield. Now you can see all the accessories do appear to be pretty uh, beat up intentionally. Uh, so he has seen a lot of action. cool thing about the accessories is they have an alternate way to uh, store them on the character on the toy so what we can do is you can actually put the axe here on the shield and the mace here they clip right into the shield and then once they're in, pegged into place we can go ahead we'll bring death's head in and there's these two pegs on the shield and there's these two holes in his back and it just pops right in Let's go ahead and put that mace back in place. And then he can just storm on his back like that. Alright, and when you don't want to store the accessories on his back, what you can do is you take the shield. This will clip right onto his forearm. Like so. And then we'll go ahead, we'll put the sword in this hand. And then we can put the battle, I'm sorry, put the mace in this hand. We're going to do a real quick height check on this figure, bring in our trusty tape measure. And he is about five inches tall. All right, let's take a quick look at the articulation. His head is on a ball joint. His shoulders, it's a combination of, a, I believe, a hinge and a swivel. He has a swivel on his upper forearm, about a 90 degree bend at his elbow, and his wrist spins 360 degrees. And all these joints are duplicated on the opposite side. He does not have a waist joint, but he, his whole upper torso can move around. I believe so. There, I think I can't see it for sure, but I think there's a ball joint in there that allows his free range of motion. Uh, same thing with his hips. 
uh, free range of motion. I believe that they are ball joints. It's just hard to see. He does have double jointed knees. And his ankles can swivel side to side. And also there's a hinge so they can go up and down. All right, so here's a quick close-up shot of Death's Head head sculpt. Now, um, yeah, I really dig. It's such an oddball type character, and I really, really love this guy. Uh, the horns, uh, they're, this is all kind of like softer plastic slash rubber, so you're not going to hurt yourself on any of these, either the horns on his head or the horns from his mouthpiece. So his cape is this soft rubbery material, and uh, that can be a benefit as well as a hindrance. Uh, sometimes, depending on the pose that you're trying to get, it can help him stand up. But also sometimes in the pose that you're trying to get him in, it can prevent him from taking that pose. The cape, as well as the shoulder pads, and coming around to the front, this chest piece, this is all one piece. So it, you can see it, it's kind of awkward because a whole uh, chest piece and shoulder pieces will move around if you're trying to get this cape out of the way. Another odd thing about this cape slash torso slash shoulder pad assembly here uh, is that if you flip, flip this open, you see he has these holes in his chest. You would think that the, this would peg in and that would help keep this whole upper portion stationary, but there are no pegs underneath. So these holes in his chest serve no purpose as far as I can see, and this whole this, this whole thing just kind of like rocks around freely. So there you go. Marvel Infinite Series Death's Head Action Figure by Hasbro. And I can't say this enough. I love this character. Uh, besides the, the flaw of that whole weird cape, shoulder pad, torso, one piece thing not really fitting correctly. I do love this figure, so if you can find him, and he's obscure, so I'm pretty sure you probably can find him um, for not that much money. And I don't necessarily know if a lot of people are looking for this character, but I love him, and I and I can't recommend him enough. If you have any particular questions, please let me know down below. And as always, I thank you guys so much for tuning in. It really means a lot to me. And until the next video, we'll talk to you later.